you guys. So this is obviously a very different video. I have no idea whether this will make the internet or not. And this is obviously a weird angle and I'm driving. So there's that. Um, but I wanted to get my thoughts down as I, they're fresh on my brain. And um, talk about kind of what I've been doing this last past week. So. Um, so my sister, uh, shortly before her 40th birthday, she, um, found a lump under her breast and it turned out to be, uh, DCIS, which is, I guess, a, a stage zero breast cancer. And, um, through the, the course of kind of testing, they did find, um, quite a bit of it on the one side and other side some lumps there too um, so um, so they, they also did genetic testing to see um, what type of as they were trying to figure out um, the, you know her best course of treatment be it you know a lump, a lumpectomy versus a mastectomy um, did some genetic testing to if she has any uh, gene mutations that predisposes and disposes you to cancer. So through that, she had, uh, we have a couple of um, gene mutations. I say we, because most likely I've got some, but she's got a couple of gene mutations. Not the, not the highest risk one, not the BRAC or whatever it's called, not that, but um, I think one was uh, CHECK2 uh, and then a PMS2. Anyways, so with the amount of cancer that she had, and even though it was stage zero, and the genetic testing that did um, raise her possibility of getting breast cancer again, she went with the double mastectomy. So, um, she's got four kids. One, the youngest one is, I think, two and a half, and then the oldest is ten. And um, she also runs a daycare during the day. Um, just a, a few other kids, not a large daycare, but a few other kids in her home. So uh, I spent the last week being her personal nurse. So it, uh, after her double mastectomy. So it was, um, you know, there at the beginning, it was helping her. Basically, she had a uh, a lounging chair with the electric buttons on it for reclining and stuff like that. Anyways, she um, she has spent the last week in that chair, sleeping there and, and there throughout the day in their living room. And so, um, I slept on the couch every night, and then was there to help her, um, you know, take her pills in the middle of the night and get up to go to the bathroom. So, first night was, oh, uh, so rough. So, she had, they had put a lot of, I think she was starting to get nauseous at the surgery. After the surgery, um, they are still at the hospital, so they, they pumped her full of fluids, um, which meant the first night, she had to get up and go to the bathroom at probably like every 45 minutes to an hour. So, the first night was terrible because I had to get up. I, and I wasn't falling back to sleep very quickly. Um, and and so, it was I had some, like half an hour, which was not great. Um, so, this was a Tuesday night. Um, and she wasn't doing too bad pain-wise, just trying to, you know, wait for the all the anesthetic stuff to wear off and not very stable on her feet and stuff like that. So, um, and so, uh, that was kind of the, the first night, um, and then the next day, um, and my mom had spent the night too, uh, just down in their basement in a bedroom, so if I, you know, if we had any concerns or if I needed help with anything, I'd be able to get her up. Her husband was still working, so we're trying to, um, you know, keep his nights somewhat uninterrupted. Um, since he would be working.
morning. So the next day, um, mom was, my mom was in charge of kind of the daycare. Um, and then, you know, I continued to just be my sister's personal nurse. And, and you know, throughout the week, she's gotten more and more independent, getting up a lot more. Today, she was on her feet quite a bit. Um, and really, at this point, you know, we're weekend. At this point, the only thing I was really doing that she couldn't do on her own was one, she couldn't reach the microwave. So, I, you know, getting her lunch ready for her uh, and breakfast. Uh, two, she was very... Um, in a lot of pain in the mornings um, from not moving at all um, and we, we would always have a 3 a.m. alarm to get up and take her pain pill um, and then she'd always go to the bathroom but her um, she was she she would be super super sore in the mornings and so um, she's reclined back in her chair and I would take her grab her body because the buttons were a bit choppy so it's kind of a unless you're holding it the whole time but then you're kind of moving up faster than you like so anyway so I would grab the, her back and pull her up into the uh, seated position and get her food and medicine as quickly as possible in the morning so that's really the only thing that she's needed me for um, at this point um, I was she did have a couple of drainage lines. Um, oh, and just FYI, with the double mastectomy, she did go with the reconstruction. So um, I don't know how that affects the aftercare. So this is just kind of her experience. Anyway, so she did have a drainage line coming from each side that went into kind of a drainage bag. So I would change, empty out that bag a couple times a day. Um, and then even um, make sure things were moving through the lines okay, that there weren't kind of clots holding things up. Um, and then, you know, I'd help some with the kids uh, throughout the day. Um, not a lot because that my role was to be Julie's personal nurse, so I wanted to be at hand and also I'm just tired. Um, so I feel kind of bad I didn't help out more with uh, the daycare kids. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so it's, it's been a week. Um, and like I said, she's got four kids of her own, so I kind of help with them at night. But they, they've got their kids trained up real well to be self-sufficient, take care of themselves. The two-and-a-half-year-olds, like... I didn't have to ask my sister what to do with the two and a half year old, the two and a half year old would tell me. So there's once I grabbed the wrong diaper and she would tell me that's the wrong diaper. Or I was giving the daycare kids lunch and she helped me find in the fridge. She knew exactly where in the fridge the kids' lunches were. Um, so she she was actually super helpful. A very oh and she she gets in and out of her crib herself. Um, even picks out her clothes or so. I don't know. I was just really impressed. So all those kids are very, very self-sufficient, which is fabulous. Um, uh, one of the things I've done for uh, a few of the mornings was helping to get the kids out the door for school. So they had alarms to get up, and then I was just making sure that they were getting ready in time and they didn't have things forgotten, stuff like that. So it was 6.15 in the morning that the kids would get up, so that was early, but I would crawl back in bed, and then whoever was in charge of the daycare for that day would come at like 7, and then kids would come shortly thereafter, um, but I was able to sleep on the couch until like close to 9, so I actually got, despite getting up a couple times in the night and whatnot, overall, I got pretty decent nights of sleep. Um, I am ready to get home and sleep in my own bed and I miss my husband because I've been gone for a week um, evidently so he told now we my husband and I missed each other a lot because I've never been gone I've been gone a couple days here and there for work or for family or um, I've got like a girls weekend reunion uh, every year so I've been gone a couple days here and there um, but I've never been gone you know a full week like this so that was that was tough, but um, anyways, he said he spent the first.
first few days bored and then he did a whole lot of projects. So now he wants to send me away for a week every fall. <laughs> so he can be productive. Because honestly, when we're together, we want to play. You know, we want to, we go on walks, we cook stuff together, we nap, we watch movies, you know. Um, we like to do stuff together, so we're not super productive project-wise. Um, we've actually tried um, <laughs> putting a schedule, somewhat of a schedule for us to have some independent time in our evenings so that we can work our own stuff. He works on, um, you know, he likes to go in the band room and play music. I like to work on the channel. Um, Poshmark, so I like to do that stuff. So um, we're just kind of joined at the hip a lot. So we're trying to, you know, be productive separately here and there. Um, but anyway, so yeah, he wants to send me in for away for a week uh, every fall. And you know what? I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. If he wants to, if he wants to stay home and do projects, I think I could find some place to be for a week. Um, so. So yeah, that's kind of been my week. Um, you know, it's, I'm really glad I was able to help my sister. I've actually stayed in the hospital with her um, when she had a couple of, not her first kid, but a couple of the kids that way, because um, her husband would have paternity leave. Um, so that way, once she got out of the hospital, he would be fully rested and ready to go. Um, and then Julie, my sister, uh, could get rest once she got home from the hospital. Um, not, not that a mom can really get that much rest, but um, I think it works better when one of them is a little bit more rested, at least from, you know, right out of the gate. So anyway, so I have a lots of experience being her nursemaid, and we have a good rapport. And I think she feels comfortable bossing me around and Notoriously, and when I've stayed with her in the hospital, I've I haven't been as good at waking up in the night as I was this week. I wasn't sure how it would be, but I'm <laughs> I'm known as someone who wakes up confused and a little grumpy. <laughs> um, oh, it's not a good angle. Part of my second chin. Um, anyways, I'm known to wake up confused and. So my sister, when I was in the hospital, she'd wake up and ask me to do, wake me up and ask me to do something, and I would just be confused. And then um, my tiredness would get me, or or being woken up in the night would get. I've been known to kind of yell at her a little bit, a little bit. Anyways, I don't, I didn't, I didn't have any. I was, I was not, I was good. <laughs> so I would wake up, do on a spot, do my thing. We had a system because she was in a, like I said, she was in kind of a lazy boy type chair. I was on the couch and we had a fan going because she can't sleep without the sound of a fan. And so the question was, you know, um, other than our scheduled times where, you know, I would set an alarm, how would she wake me up if she needed something like get out of the chair to go to the bathroom, which was much more necessity uh, the first few nights than we, we haven't needed to the last few nights. Anyway, so she had this, She's got wood floors, and she had this wooden cup holder, and um, I would, uh, she would drop it on the ground to wake me up, and boy, it was just this loud clatter, and it would, like, wake, not just wake me up, but, like, wake me up with a jolt of adrenaline, which actually was a very successful way of waking me up. Um, I found the times where my alarm went off, it was almost like, too peaceful of a wake up so it's like oh I'm tired I'm groggy um but shoot when that when that little cup holder thing hit the ground um it jolted me away because it was a loud noise of, what 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 do you need what do you need I'm on it um so anyways I'm, I'm glad I was um you know with it not too groggy and was able to um and didn't yell at my sister because yelling at somebody who just had a surgery is not great. Um, I remember one of the times we were in the hospital and I yelled at my sister. And again, I don't, I, I don't, it's not really yell, but I kind of get, I've gotten a little snippy a, a couple of times because 
I'm not a snippy person or a yelly person whatsoever. Um, anyways, one of the times, I, my sister had just been like, hey, when you get a chance, will you grab out from this bag the baby's next outfit? And she said, when you get a chance. But it was like I was sitting there not wanting to get up or, or I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. But I kind of got grumpy about doing it because I didn't feel like it needed to be done right away. Now, keep in mind, again, she said when you get a chance, which does not mean you need to do it right then. But Sleepy Jen is not always the most rational. And so I did something that I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just tired. And then I was like, oh, did I just tell the lady who had a baby that I was tired in a whiny way? Um, so anyway, so I was glad that I was a, you know, I wasn't like that this time. And that's like, like I said, with waking up, you know, more, more than every hour the first night, several times the second night. But like I said, it got progressively better. So overall, just an update on her. Not that you, you guys don't really know her, so you probably don't really care in an update. But, you know, I'm talking about it all right now. Why not? So overall, her pain has not been too bad. She's only taking the prescription painkillers at night to, you know, help her sleep. But other than that, she's on like ibuprofen during the day. Um, and... You know, she's able to, you know, get around. And she's just trying to keep things stretched out. She's, her husband helped her take a couple of showers now. Um, so I think she's, I think she's, she's doing well so far. No complications or anything like that. We've kind of been on edge because she has a friend that had to do the mastectomy. So she did one at a time. Um, and one of the, one of the sides ended up just with a really bad infection. And she ended up in the hospital week so we're all kind of a little on edge to hope that everything continues to go well um, with her but so far things are things are things are going well so um, that's an update so for myself um, I managed to the genetic testing so obviously you know there's this heightness awareness heightened awareness at your own risk um, so I've actually got my first appointment with the doctor that I'll do my own genetic testing for um, this week to, I think, just kind of discuss the genetic testing and stuff and discuss um, the family history of cancer and stuff like that. There's a decent amount coming from my dad's side. Um, my mom's had breast cancer too, actually the same kind, the, the DCIS. Um, so, you know, I've got it coming from a couple different places there. And uh, so I'm doing my own genetic testing, which may mean, um, you know, that I have to be monitored more closely. Um, and then I have a mammogram scheduled for uh, early next month, early November. So, um, you know, it's going to be one of those things that's, you know, it's, it's much closer on my radar. Cancer is always on everybody's radar. I'm all for preventative checks. Um, I, you know, I've done several, and I've also been, I guess, somewhat precancerous in multiple ways at this point. I'm 37. Um, I, well, shoot, you know, I have one thing that was somewhat precancerous at 23, um, and it's a check that you don't tend to do until you're 40. So I'm all. So you know, if I had waited till I was 40 to do that check. You know, I very well could um, have ended up with cancer well before that. So anyways, I'm all about preventative checks. Um, and, and so, you know, depending on my genetic testing and my family history, we'll just kind of have some sort of plan for the frequency in which I need to get certain things checked out. Um, so, you know, that's all you can really do. You know, you can't think about it too much. You can sit there and fear, but I, you know, I choose to live my life. And um, as long as I feel like I'm staying up on my preventative checks, there's a lot of different kinds of cancers that can be slow growing. So, um, provided I'm up on my appointments, that any type of cancer I might have uh, for some of these checks, you know, I should be able to get it out early. So, anyway.
anyways, that's a lot. Um, a very different type of video, obviously, not at all fashion related. I have zero makeup on. I hope sunglasses covered up most of my face. Did not cover up my slightly greasy hair because I took a couple showers, but you know, that was just not top priority. Plus, I just, you know, I don't know. I don't necessarily feel at home in somebody else's house. Um, so, anyways, so hopefully the sun is washing me out. Anyways, so that's it. That's my video. Um, just, you know, I think being open about these things um, when it comes to cancer and what people's experiences are like is important. Um, and kind of how that affects everybody around us. And, um, you know, I, I very much think it should be an open conversation. So, I don't know. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. video I'm sure will be back to the fashion world again but I just felt like sharing what was going on this last week so all right well if you're not subscribed feel free to subscribe below